Hi, this is Arshad Kanani. On behalf of the investigators and authors of the stairway study, it's my pleasure to present this data. Before we discuss the stairway trial, I want to address the biggest unmet need in neovascular AMD. We know that anti-VEGF treatments have been the first line of care for the treatment of neovascular AMD for over a decade. However, the response to therapy is heterogeneous and no reliable biomarkers exist to predict which patients may sustain vision with fewer injections. As a result, frequent office visits are required to assess the need for reinjection. Moreover, studies of real-world practice patterns highlight gaps in visual acuity outcomes between clinical practice and clinical trials as patients in clinical practice receive fewer injections than patients in randomized clinical trials. Low injection frequency in clinical practice correlates with suboptimal outcomes and a significant loss of vision over time. The need for frequent office visits and injections required to maintain vision gains places a significant treatment burden on patients, caregivers, healthcare providers, and society. Therefore, we need to continue to investigate um, additional pathways beyond anti-VEGF to treat patients with neovascular AMD. The ANGE TI2 pathway is critical for normal and pathological angiogenesis. The ANGE TI2 signaling is essential for normal vascular development and hemostasis. ANGE1 signaling through the TI2 receptor promotes vascular stability. ANGE2 blocks ANGE1 mediated activation of TI2 resulting in inflammation and vascular destabilization, including leakage and neovascularization. ANG2 levels are, incre are increased under pathological conditions, resulting in parasite dropout, recruitment of inflammatory cytokines, and increased VEGF sensitivity. Together, ANG2 and VEGF A drive angiogenesis, inflammation, vascular instability, and leakage. Frisimab is the first bispecific antibody that has been designed for intraocular use. It simultaneously and independently binds and neutralizes ANG2 and VEGF-A with high specificity and potency. The FC portion was specifically engineered to reduce systemic exposure and reduce the potential for inflammatory side effects. Simultaneous neutralization of ANG2 and VEGF-A has demonstrated additive benefits in preclinical models of choroidal neovascularization. In patients with neovascular AMD, ANG2 and VEGF-A neutralization is hypothesized to contribute to a sustained effect on efficacy as a consequence of extended durability. Here's the design of the stairway study. Stairway was a phase two multi-center randomized control clinical trial to evaluate the efficacy, safety, and durability of frisimab in patients with neovascular AMD over 52 weeks. Stairway was designed to assess extended dosing and evaluated frisimab dosed at 16 and 12 week intervals following initiation in patients with neovascular AMD compared with monthly ranubizumab. Patients were randomized to receive frisimab 6 mg dosed every 16 weeks, frisimab 6 mg dosed every 12 weeks, or monthly ranubizumab 0.5 mg. Looking at the disease activity in the stairway study, at week 24, 12 weeks after the last loading dose, disease activity was assessed using six per protocol defined criteria. Based on changes in CST and BCVA as well as any other disease activity based on investigator opinion. Patients randomized to the frisimab every 16 week flex arm who did not have disease activity at week 24 continued on the 16-week interval treatment through study end, while patients with active disease at week 24 received treatment every 12 weeks through study end. Patients in the frisimab 16-week flex arm therefore included both patients who after the initial four monthly doses continued on the once every 16 weeks regimen through study end as well as those who receive frisimab every 12 weeks from week 24 due to active disease detected at that time point. Patients with no week 24 visit assessment were not considered to have active disease at week 24. At week 24, nearly two-thirds uh, of all frisimab-treated patients had no disease activity and had the potential for once every 16-week dosing. If you look at um, the enrollment in the study, 76 patients were randomized in one to two to two fashion 
into the ranibizumab 0.5 milligram every four weeks, frisimab 6 milligram every 12 weeks, and frisimab 6 milligram every 16 weeks. Flex treatment arms. Only one eye was chosen as the study eye. Five patients were excluded from all analysis due to GCP non-compliance at a single site. If you look at the patient demographics and ocular characteristics, the baseline characteristics were generally well balanced across treatment arms in the stairway study. The average age for all patients was 78.5 years and 58% of patients were female. There were small differences in baseline BCV and CST due to small sample size. For example, differences, difference of five letters between the frisimab every 16 weeks flex arm and the monthly ranibizumab every four week arm. Also, difference of 61 microns between frisimab every 16 weeks flex arm and the monthly ranibizumab arm. Here are the results. The vision gains with frisimab Q16 read flex and Q12 weeks were comparable with monthly gold standard ranibizumab. At the primary endpoint of week 40, frisimab treat treatment in every 16 week flex and every 12 week uh, regimen resulted in meaningful vision gains that are comparable to ranibizumab fixed monthly treatment. At week 52, the adjusted mean BCVA change from baseline was plus 9.6 letters, plus 10.1 letters, and plus 11.4 letters for the monthly ranibizumab, frisimab every 12 weeks, and frisimab every 16 week flex arms, respectively. Assessed as a secondary endpoint, the proportion of patients gaining 15 or more ETDRS letters from baseline at week 52 was 37.5%, 33.3%, and 46.4% for the monthly ranibizumab versus frisimab every 12 weeks and frisimab every 16 week flex arm, respectively. If you look at anatomy, the anatomic outcomes as assessed by STOCT and fluorescein angiography at, at week 40 and 50 to support the visual acuity outcomes in the stairway trial. The CST reductions achieved with frisimab every 16 weeks flex and every 12 weeks were comparable with monthly ranuvizumab. The adjusted mean change in CST from baseline at week 52 was minus 129.9, minus 138.5, and minus 122.5 microns for the monthly ranibizumab compared to frisimab every 12 weeks and frisimab every 16 week flex arm respectively. If you look at the change in CNV leakage and lesion area at week 52, change from baseline in total lesion area was minus 4.5, minus 5.4 and minus 4.2 millimeter square compared respectively for the monthly ranibizumab versus frisimab every 12 weeks and frisimab every 16 week flex arms. At week 52, change from baseline in area of total lesion leakage was minus 5.3, minus 5.6, minus 4.6 millimeter square respectively for the monthly ranibizumab versus frisimab Q12 weeks and frisimab Q16 week flex arms. Safety is crucial for a new molecule. Looking at the key ocular and non-ocular AEs in the stairway study, the safety analysis population included all randomized patients, excluding five patients from a single site due to GCP compliance, as stated earlier, who received at least one dose of the study treatment withdrawn from the study or not. Approximately three quarters of patients experienced at least one AE, 81.3 for monthly ranibizumab, 75% for every 12 weeks and 74.2% for every 16 week flex arms. Overall, 39.4% of patients experienced an ocular AE in the study eye. There were no serious ocular AEs in the study eye or fellow eye. 60.5% of patients experienced at least one non-ocular AE, but none were considered related to study treatments. No AEs were reported that led to discontinuation of treatment. Three patients experienced AEs with a fatal outcome due to either ischemic stroke in the frisimab every 12 weeks arm, sepsis in frisimab every 16 week flex arm, or metastatic neoplasm frisimab every 16 week flex arm, none were considered related to study treatment. There were no cases of endophthalmitis in the study. Overall, frisimab was well tolerated and there were no new or unexpected safety events observed in stairway. 
The observed safety profile of fresimab in stairway was comparable with the safety profile reported in patients with neovascular AMD receiving intravitreal anti-VEGF therapies, as well as with the findings from the larger uh, avenue study. In conclusion, the key takeaways from the phase two stairway study are BCVA gains were fully maintained through week 54 with frisimab every 16 week flex and every 12 weeks dosing <coughs> regimens and were comparable with monthly gold standard ranibizumab. Anatomic improvements, including CNV lesion size and vascular leakage measured on fluorescein and geography with frisimab every 16 weeks flex and every 12 weeks were comparable with those achieved with monthly ranibizumab. There were no new or unexpected safety events in stairway comparable with the overall safety profile across the fresimab phase one and phase two studies, including Avenue, Stairway, and Boulevard that enrolled nearly 600 patients. The stairway fresimab phase two results show the potential of simultaneous ANG to VEGFA utilization for sustained efficacy in neovascular AMD through extended dosing at every 16 weeks and every 12 weeks intervals. The phase three clinical trials, Tenaya and Lucerne, designed to confirm efficacy, sustained efficacy, and safety of frisimab in patients with neovascular AMD are currently underway. Thank you very much for your attention.